UT Arlington, uh, which was a great turnout, uh, and we're delighted to have the opportunity to host these, uh, these legislative luncheons that have been so well attended and so successful. I will just say that uh, uh, on behalf of UT Arlington, we're in the middle of, of uh, finals week about to start commencement, which is an exciting time here on the campus, and this has been a tremendous fall semester at UT Arlington. Uh, first of all, we have a record enrollment of almost 33,000 students here at UT Arlington. We also have record research expenditures, uh, a record high uh, philanthropic gifts for the last fiscal year, uh, a lot of firsts and deaths so far, but we're not satisfied. We've got a lot of progress to make, and, but let me just say, for all of you, whether you're, you are part of the university or you're a supporter and friend of the university, we at UT Arlington are on track for achieving our tier one goals, and we thank you for your support in our doing that. Speaker of the House, Joe Strauss, was elected to that position January 13, 2009, leading us during a session in which they cut taxes and put billions of dollars aside. I think we all know that experience is going to be critical come January. He was elected to the House originally in February 2005, having served in the Reagan and Bush administrations. He's a native fifth generation Texan. He's involved in and managing insurance, investment, and executive benefits enterprise. His wife, Julie, and he have two outstanding daughters, and he is absolutely no stranger here in County. He's been here often, he's been here frequently. He knows us. We've had a chance to share with him some of the things that we believe our community and our region can do to meet through Texas. I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge both UTA and the outstanding partnerships we have. Jim talked about a number of first Here's one more we shared with the speaker. The Center for Innovation here in Arlington jointly manages a nonprofit between the University of Chicago, where it's the first organization in the United States to be named a federal partner intermediary for more than one agency. And we're now proud to say we represent seven federal agencies led by the Department of Defense. That do over $100 billion a year in research and currently have over 15,000 patents. Our simple job move the patents to market and find industry willing to do joint research in 390 federal labs. If that's of remote interest to anyone in the room, see us after the meeting by Jim. It's another opportunity for the University of Texas at Arlington and Arlington Chamber to demonstrate our commitment to the broader community, the regional community, and the state of Texas. Our speaker, Sarah's ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming the Speaker of the House of the Texas House of Representatives, the Honorable Joseph House. Position 
as a future world-class research institution, thanks in large part to your great president here. I know he's an accomplished attorney who practiced law and launched his career in educational leadership in Michigan before, like about half of that state, you all moved here. <laughs> I was told that I was told that Ted Nugent left Michigan too. <laughs>
Keeping our economic miracle going remains important as we tackle significant, very significant budget challenges and shortfall when we start the 82nd session in less than a month. The balanced budget we pass will be a very lean one with no new taxes. This will be a tight year with cuts and substantial sacrifices. But like the Texas families we serve, the state budget will just have to do more with less. We'll have to be innovative and we're going to have to look for new ways to provide necessary services. We're going to have to be innovative like you've been here in Arlington and UT, Arlington and the Chamber and all the partnerships that you that you do in cooperation with one another. As we look at each bill in this next session, I hope my fellow House members will ask one simple question. Is this good or bad for business? Especially small business. Dr. Shelton, I was introduced to your great mother, who I'm sure will be asking you the same questions. I just learned about her longtime CPA practice not far from here. And that was the, the exact question that a small business owner posed to me in a discussion I had uh, recently in Thailand. He asked me to think about that question every time I made a decision in the legislature that could impact the nearly 400,000 small business owners across the state. Decisions that could affect job creators and families that are seeking to survive the worst recession in 70 years. It's an important question to consider because small business owners make up the backbone our state's economy. Taking that advice for government to just get out of the way, we have focused on economic growth in Texas by keeping government and our tax burden limited, by reforming tort laws, and by ensuring government regulations are predictable. We need to keep this focus because we all understand that the best place to create jobs is in the private sector, and with as little interference in government as possible. In its own unique way, the innovation and creativity fostered here in Texas sparks small but important changes across the globe. In 2006, Blake Mykoski, a young man from right here in Arlington, was traveling in South America where he saw hundreds of children without shoes. He founded a company when he was 30 years old called Tom's Shoes for Tomorrow. The shoes were based on designs he saw in South America. But when he began marketing them, he had a revelation. He said, I'm going to start a shoe company, and for every pair that we sell, I'll give a pair to someone who needs them. This concept might have remained an idea only, if not for Blake's hard work and entrepreneurial spirit. As of September of this year, Tom's has sold over a million pairs of shoes and helped countless children in developing countries. A small business can transform lives whether it is in developing countries or providing jobs right here in Arlington. Many small business owners across Texas have become very successful and influential when they started small. Companies like Dell Computers, Whole Foods, Clear Channel, Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus, I know for sure, has sold over a million pairs of shoes. <laughs> Just to my wife and my teenage daughters. <laughs> the upcoming session is going to Require the legislature, businesses, and our communities to work together like they've never worked together before to ensure that Texas is the best place to work, to live, and to raise our families. That's why I'm enthusiastic about hearing what you have to say. After all, you are the ones that provide jobs and careers that are integral to supporting Texas families and economic growth in our state. There is a lot we can be proud of in our state's economic growth, even in the midst of these tough times. We only have to look at local people like Bill Lynch, who I think is here today. Bill bought a failing Minuteman Press franchise in 2005, which I'm told was averaging about $5,000 a month. He turned it into an $85,000 a month enterprise. And if you know anything about printing, the printing business and the challenges posed by internet sales, that is quite an accomplishment. Today he shares knowledge he has with others coaching entrepreneurs on achieving success in small and mid-sized businesses on their own. Bill, Bill, I hear you have two daughters just like me. Uh, you might stay after giving me a little coaching on how to survive the teen years and the college years, if you have the time. So the main message for me today is to thank you for being examples of economic development and economic growth. I'm all ears to hear what you think, and my door is always open. The members of the legislature know my door is open to them as you bring ideas to them as well. If there are obstacles that the 
legislature can address to help improve the business climate and to further your success, I want to know about them. I need to know about them. And I thank you very, very much for the opportunity and the honor of being with you today. I wish you all the very best for the holidays and prosperity in 2011. Thank you.